Are you constantly feeling hungry on keto? That's the question that we're talking about today. Hello, wellness warriors. Welcome to Mind Blowing Health and Wellness with Violet. Pat Chat Edition. I'm Violet. And I'm Pat. We got a question. You want to walk us through it? Yeah. She started keto for a health reason, not for weight loss, which is a good thing. We always said that <laughs> you should do it for health. I like it already. But she ended up gaining weight. So I, she researched and found that too much protein had the same effect as carbs, possibly because I was eating a lot of fat and protein at the same time. She reduced her protein and sticking to 1,600 calories per day. But she often feels hungry. So uh, I try to have around 40, 50 grams of protein, 20 grams of carbs, and the rest in fat around 150 grams. Uh, but she finds keto really hard now. Uh, I don't feel satiated on fat. When I was eating more protein, it was easier. Uh, but 40, 50 gram of protein is actually re uh, so little protein food. And she's right. Uh, I feel like giving up. So, so the first thing I'm going to say yeah. there, and this is interesting, because you started keto for health reasons. Interestingly enough, like I feel like you only mentioned carbs once. You said 20 grams of carbs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, you yeah, said so that, but you said that you were doing keto and were gaining weight. Yeah. So what that makes me think is, if I didn't have any weight that I needed to lose and I'm doing 20 grams of carbs and then protein and you, you, I mean, yes, there are some people that believe that if you eat too much protein, you will gain weight. The thing is, it's too much protein with your carbs being right at your limit. So my guess is that one of two things, either you really just needed to take your carb count down a little bit more because if you were at your good weight and you didn't want to lose anything, that might have been part of it. However, the other thing I'm going to say is that is maybe you just didn't need all the fat. The fat. So I'm going, I feel like we're always in this story where people think keto is high fat and so then they're pushing to eat all the fat. It's yeah. not a high fat diet. Normally, if you're eating the fat that comes along with your protein, you should be getting your amount of fat that you need. So when people talk about protein, like keto being a high fat diet, it's only because when I take all the carbs away, the energy source becomes fat. But is it really a high fat diet? You were eating that fat but likely anyway. For sure, what I'm, what I'm gonna add to that, like uh, with the amount of protein you were eating before, I don't think it was enough to, to create a gluconeogenesis. I think the right term to, to like when, when your body is trying to to convert your protein in uh, in carbs. Uh, well, we do that all the time, though. Yeah, of course. Like, yeah, because like this is the source of your carb that we need if you don't yeah. ingest them, right? Okay, so that. But that's... but not only that, like it's just normal for our body to do okay. it. Every time we use our muscles and we deplete our our glycogen stores, our body okay. replaces it. So I'm okay. just gonna point that out. Okay, yeah. it's not gonna create carbs that is gonna store. <laughs> no, it's for essential like uh, function of your body. But where you're right, I do think like. 40 is like very very low 50 grams of protein per day don't like don't stick to that number it, it, even i think i think we we checked your yours uh, not so long ago i think it was 90 yep. for a man is like more like 170 i think for me with my 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 size but you should aim close to 90 i think uh, grams of protein well per we day. don't know see here's the thing is but, that we don't yeah. know what you should be aiming yeah. at because we don't know how tall you are we don't know how active okay, you are sure. we don't know so we're but not going to say that but what we're going to say is that 50 grams of protein mm -hmm. seems very low what I'm also going to say, though, is you are telling me that it's low because you are hungry. So your body's not lying to you. Yeah. The other thing I, I might want to add, if you're always feeling hungry, maybe there's some sources of sneaky carbs that got into your diet. So just like take a break of like of, of, of your diet right now and go back to basics and start like weighing your food and tracking Maybe you have a little bite of, you have you had a video not so long ago about that. Like maybe you grab a little bite of ice cream when, if you have kids, when you give it to your kids. Uh, maybe you have a, a, a bite of French fries once in a while. So there might be uh, sources of carbs that are like raising your insulin because if you get your 1600 calories from fat, you shouldn't feel hungry. It's really hard to feel hungry on fat. It's hard overdoing your fat even. So, so there might be sources of carbs you, you kind of lost track of that's triggering your insulin, that's triggering your hunger. I would say that when we, when we eat appropriately, so if I'm eating enough of everything, I'm not going to be hungry unless I'm doing a cycling in and out of carbohydrate. But since you've taken your carbs down to 20, that shouldn't be the case. But the reason that I feel like the low protein, protein you hungry is because it's low. 
your body's trying to repair, your body's trying to build, your body's trying to be strong. If there's not enough protein, there's not enough protein. Mm. 150 grams from fat, fat. It sounds like a good good number. Sounds like. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing: is that is that it's not a. It's also not about pushing fat. So here's mm -hmm. here's where it kind of gets a little complicated. You told me that you gained weight, and your body was getting a certain amount of protein before, but you were gaining weight because you were doing 20 grams of carbs, maybe a little bit extra protein, what you thought, and you were doing extra fat. Extra fat. So you were eating the fat amount. Mm -hmm. My question is, what happens if rather than changing the protein number, you change the fat? Because the protein number should never change. Yeah. This is something I said from the beginning. Protein is a pivot. Mm. It should never change. If I was eating a healthy amount of protein before I started keto or any other diet, then the amount of protein I'm getting should still be the same. Mm -hmm. So my belief is that what's probably happening is that your body is pushing you, trying to get you to get more protein. You're not eating the protein, but you're still eating that 20 grams of carbs. You're still eating that 150. And like I feel like together this is creating a situation where you're probably eating a little bit more than you believe. So yeah. I would really, I go, I agree with you. We should track. We should mm -hmm. make sure make that and just make sure everything is what it is. These are guesses though, because yeah, yeah. we're not in front of, you're not in front because of us and we're not seeing what you have on, right? Like these are guesses. Because if, if in, in your story, you're, you're ob obviously not getting your enough, I would say probably enough fat from the meat you have with 50 grams of, uh, of, of protein. So it, like depending on the cut of meats and like what, what you eat like me. So, I would be interested in knowing what are your sources of fat. Can can we know that some sources are better than others of fat? But are the can the bad sources of fat can make you feel like hungry? I don't know. Here's what's what, like this is the other thing I want to point out that I find very difficult because in all of this we have no idea where anything is coming from, mm -hmm. right? You're telling me you're eating 20 grams of carbs in a day, but is it coming from a cookie? So like it's hard when we do this kind of stuff because mm -hmm. if I eat one cookie and that's all I eat today. Just the fact, though, that even if it's less than 20 grams, mm -hmm. the hit it's going to put in me, in me and the insulin spike is going to cause right away yeah. is not comparable than if I ate a plate of salad. It's true. Right? Yeah. It's highly processed food. So the other problem that could be happening here is that if you were doing keto, but you were using highly processed foods, that could also be causing the problem. Pro Again, we don't recommend keto with highly processed foods. We recommend keto with whole, whole foods. foods. And the reason for whole foods is that so whole foods from the ground, whole fruit mm -hmm. from an animal. Why? Because then we know we're not having that processed part that's going to attack our body and create inflammation mm -hmm. and create. Other, so maybe even the weight gain could be inflammation from the processed foods. Maybe we can invite you to go back and just reminded me the video we did like in the past where we were talking about uh, the glycemic index and the satiety index. So there is such a thing as satiety. Check if your uh, the food on your diet are not like in the lowest part of the satiety index, and maybe try to do some replacement to for food that are high on the satiety index without being processed or or too high on the glycemic index. Because you'll see that, uh, for example, sweet potatoes are really high on the satiety index, which I have no no problem believing. But it's also relatively high on the glycemic index, which will trigger your insulin. I think the other thing I just want to point out. Because I really, I love that you came to keto for health. But you, you end this by saying, I never had that feeling of hungry, especially after eating, when you were doing 15 to 1700 calories. And for me, the thing is, yes, we want to problem solve this. But I, I need you to keep it in mind that if you came here for health, that means other things were happening. So you might not have been feeling hungry, but if you were having inflammation problems, if you were having like metabolic problems if you were having it then feeling hungry is that the worst thing like compared to like my die i'm becoming diabetic or compared to so like i feel like it's just let's put this in perspective that it's not about like i wasn't hungry doing that it's more about okay what's happening that i'm hungry doing this mm -hmm. if i know that this is a healthier way to do it like where's the the glitch coming from right because whenever i see stuff like that it makes me feel like people are trying to say well this isn't working mm. is it not working quote unquote or is it that maybe there's something happening here we don't have enough information the thing i was thinking about if you are always feeling hungry maybe you just don't have enough maybe you have some kind of eye metabolism and and don't because you said in your comment you're sticking to 1600 calories maybe you shouldn't stick to 1600 calories add a little bit more uh, either pro but for sure Pro protein I think you should have proteins that's gonna add fat uh, too but if 
even if you're not comfortable with two meals a day, had a little like couple eggs in the morning or something like that. I don't know, like just maybe add a little bit more to your to your diet. Add more uh, add more good foods to your diet. So what are the things that cause us to be hungry? One of the things that cause us to be hungry is that there's somehow extra carbs getting in yeah. here that we're not counting. So we need to weigh and track everything that those carbs are getting in. And then our system steps in and puts those carbs away. And as soon as that happens, the energy that was supposed to be available for us to use is no longer available. That low protein number, though, to me is what's jumping off the page. I think you're not eating enough protein. And the hunger signal you're getting is actually real because your body is trying to force you to eat more protein. protein. And I feel like the mistake that you made is that rather than other lower fat, you lowered protein. As long as you're not going over your protein number, the amount of protein you were eating theoretically shouldn't have been a problem, right? And I, I have a hard time believing that your protein number was 60. Unless, like, again, if depending on your height and your, right? But like, was it actually 60 that you just took it down 10? 10. So if you're, like, if you're not close to your protein number, your body will push you to eat. We know Dr. Um, Mark Hyman talks about this, that in the United States, there are people who are hugely overweight and malnourished and their body's pushing them to eat. But because they're not eating the right foods, their body just keeps pushing them to eat, hmm. right? Because it needs protein. And if you're not eating protein, and I, there are some cities and neighborhoods where meat is not affordable for people, right? Your body will push you to get it, whatever it has to do to survive. I really do suggest to you, if you have a keto friendly doctor in your neighborhood, like that's my biggest advice to you because I don't have enough information here. These are guesses that we're making based on what you said, but I feel like the, like for me, I read this and I read the numbers, the 40 grams, 40, 50 grams of protein jumps off the page at me. But the second thing that makes, comes to my mind is possibly keto products rather than a real food. Yeah. So those are the two things that to me like jump out and say maybe that's happening there's so, so many variables also that, that we like you said we don't know uh go back maybe google uh, keto calculator where like you you're gonna input your height your weight your uh, level of activity and you're you'll get at least a clearer idea of what your number your numbers should be and like even in, in it might tell you that you need 120 grams of protein per day and your then, maintenance number two. I want. I, I, yeah, I tell people also, yeah. really, you should not be looking at your protein in this in as anything mm -hmm. to do with weight loss. Even if you're trying to lose weight, whenever you're getting your protein number, you should be getting your maintenance number. Yeah. Your body doesn't care if you want to be thinner. Mm -hmm. It still needs to build and repair. Oh sure. That and it will sense. push you to eat if you're not eating the amount that will allow it to build and repair. Mm -hmm. Right. It will not let you destroy it. That's what all of this is about. Right, the the fat gain is to stop the the sugar from killing us, and the hungry hungry that you might be living right now is to push you to get more protein possibly. To me, like having if you have if you do have you that amount of of, uh, of fat, the 150 grams of car uh, of fat, but so little proteins. Uh, where are you you are you drinking drinking olive oil? <laughs> Maybe I don't know where where's the fat coming from. That's the other question I have. Like uh, you need to add then then like fat maybe to your coffee maybe to like your dressing but or maybe salad dressing it could yeah, be so, where it's coming from uh again th we don't have enough information yeah, so. this is where it comes back to and oh by the way are you using healthy oils that's mm -hmm. the oh that's the other thing that could be happening here why i didn't even just think about it till now maybe the reason that you're having a struggle is because you're using processed oil so man-made oils like canola oil vegetable oil um, like all the man-made oils, but like not lard, but the other one, or if you're using, um, what do you call that? Margarine instead of butter or like, mm -hmm. so be careful because the problem is, is that when we start to get healthy and like, our, so if we, whatever you do will lead to some level of improvement. If it was like you went from worse to less worse, mm -hmm. your body will improve a bit, but then it'll go back to like a downward slope. So if the fat that you're having is not coming from a good source, then you will end up having inflammation. And the inflammation, of course, causes us to gain weight, right? So it's like we need to understand all the different places where this could be coming into play. So I would also suggest to you, like, make sure that you're using good quality. So naturally occurring oils like olive oil, coconut oil, avocado oil, uh, lard, uh, butter, uh, save the fat from the bacon if you are eating bacon. Um, just using good quality oils to make sure that you minimize any possible chance of inflammation. Yeah. I feel like it's normal 
for us to be hungry. And this is another thing. We, we, we don't want to be hungry. Like the truth is I get hungry every day, right? Mm -hmm. It's not a knock me down hungry like I used to get, but I still get hungry every day. Why? Because I need to eat every day. My body's going to give me that signal. Hey, mm -hmm. hey, are you eating? Yeah. Right? <laughs> now, is it true that occasionally I get through a 24 hour period and I'm like going into the next day and I'm not hungry? Sure. And how does that mm -hmm. usually happen? When we have our big Greek meals, mo one of the better times that I could actually yeah. skip a day, yeah. right? So the thing is, we need to also understand that if we are going to indulge in, and I mean, we're indulging in meat, so, mm -hmm. but if we're going to indulge in that meat, then the chances are the next day, your body's not going to need any food, right? So, I mean, it's fine that you had times where you were eating and you didn't really feel hungry, but then it also makes me wonder, like, were you eating just to eat? Because why am I eating if I'm not hungry? This is the, the other question that I have, right? again i'm i'm questioning a few things because mm -hmm. i feel like maybe we're missing information here yeah. if you want to answer our video and maybe help us understand sure. a bit better because maybe we can follow up with you and just maybe i'm not i'm not sure if we're answering your comments. question well yeah. so you can put it in the comments if you feel like is, you should not you should not feel hungry with though of course with the protein yeah but like uh you if you have well, she's it, feeling that, hungry so yeah, obviously yeah. She's feeling hungry. So the question is not if she shouldn't feel hungry. It's why is she feeling hungry? And I feel like maybe we're missing information. I, I honestly believe we're missing information. So you could help us out by letting us know, I, again, processed foods. There's, there's, there's other reasons why you might be hungry. So I'm, I'm inviting you to please, if you recognize yourself in this, give me a comment below. Let me understand a bit better the situation. But we definitely will follow up with you by answering your question. For all my wellness warriors, there are more videos right here that you can look at if you want to improve your health. I want to thank you for watching Mind Blowing Health and Wellness with Violet, Patch Hat Edition. We love making these videos for you guys, and we can't wait to be back next week. See you next week.